my name is Chris. Uh, I live in Istanbul. I'm originally from New Mexico and for many years I lived in Los Angeles where I basically grew as a teacher and started traveling the world and teaching yoga and now I'm here in Seattle. I mean, one of the, one of the things is uh, when I first started teaching in Europe and around the world, uh, one of the things that I noticed is that yoga was primarily isolated in these little communities. So often you would go to a studio in Paris even, and it would be a, a very small room, you know, we'd, we'd get changed outside, sometimes even, uh, you know, it was cold, you open to the, to the street basically, change, everybody's changing right there, you go into a little room. Um, and because, probably because internet, uh, yoga is spreading so quickly through the internet, is people have access and they're starting to uh, basically homogenize what the concept of is yoga is globally. So you're starting to see these bigger, stronger communities, uh, which when I, I kind of, let's say, grew up as a yogi in Los Angeles, um, and there was always strong practitioners in Los Angeles because of the people that gravitate there. But when I started traveling, it was, it was, I didn't find that in other places. And in the last few years, I started to see the level of yoga globally come up very quickly. And, and not only because of the internet, but you also have a lot of international teachers from the U.S. now traveling around the world, sharing uh, what, what used to be just in Los Angeles. Now you can find it in almost every major city and even some of the most random places that you wouldn't even imagine there would be yoga there, but it's there. Um, in Istanbul, for example, we have uh, the demographic of people that's practicing is massive. You have uh, anywhere from college students, young people, uh, all the way to uh, working housewives, or not work, stay-at-home housewives, who traditionally would just, just be at home, you know, fixing dinner for the family and stuff. But they're coming, they're in their late 60s, uh, and they're rocking it out. You know, we even have women that come with their hair, head covered, that are traditionally covered, and they come and they practice yoga. So the demographic is quite wide uh, in, in, in other parts of the world and I, I'm glad to see that it's penetrating at all levels. And when I first started practicing in Istanbul, I'd go to the seaside and people would look at me like, what the hell is that? Uh, and now you get little kids and they're walking by and they're saying, yoga, yoga, you know, like he's doing yoga and they'll say to the parents, yeah, yeah. So it's permeated into the culture so, so much and so quickly that even little kids know what it is. Um, in Istanbul, in our studios, we even have, you know, children's classes. Uh, so it's, it, the value of it is, is starting to spread. People are becoming more open to us, not seeing as this weird thing. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Well, even uh, in Istanbul, like there was for our licensing, uh, the sports ministry had to come out to, to make sure that it wasn't a religious based activity. Uh, and they walked around the studio and they saw all our posters for our events and you, you got Megan Curry do this incredible back then and, and, uh, and they classified it as a sport just by base, based on what they're seeing. And in the community, many people were like, no, it's not a sport, you know, it's a, something spiritual. And for me, uh, I look at it as uh, I'm willing to call it anything that allows us to do it, you know, just to put a label on it and say it's this or that, I don't really care. But if I can open my doors and people can come in and just uh, find something, either, even if it's just in the bot, they come for a physical workout and they see it as a sport, great. Uh, if they start to go someplace beyond that, then there's a higher, there's a, a, a higher value to that. Um, and, and in that sense, I'm really happy to see that even in these countries that are traditionally, would, uh, you would assume that they would be close to it, you see that it's starting to become quite normal and, in the, and I'm so happy to see that. I'm so, so happy to see that. And uh, for Yoga Day, in fact, there was a huge gathering out in the middle uh, of where the protests were last year and there was people practicing yoga on the street, mats down on the floor. It was, it was beautiful. And people see that and it's not seen as weird or, or uh, this thing that we have to push away. They're like, yeah, I want to try that. So it's good. One of the things that I've always, uh, when, I, when I tell men that I teach yoga, I do yoga, their, their initial reaction is that, oh, that's for women, right? Because that's, that's, because as you're saying, that there is more women practicing. Uh, but when men see other men who are practicing yoga and they think like, wow, there's actually, it's a, it can be a very strong practice uh, and a challenging practice. 
that's one of the ways that I've reached to them is I try to reach, reach men through their bodies in that sense. So when a man comes to my class, I'm going to challenge him uh, and I'm going to stretch him. I'm going to not even just physically stretch, but I'm going to challenge him to stretch his boundaries on all levels. Uh, and in, initially, men will come to class and they're thinking, okay, well, all these women are doing it. Uh, and then you find them struggling and it really kicks their ass. Uh, and they go out and they will tell other men. And, and that's, it's gonna, it's, it'll take a little time to kind of spread out, but um, I've, I've started to see, and there's some classes that I've seen that are now more balanced, they're more 50-50. Uh, and generally those are the classes that are physically challenging. So man likes the, the men tend to gravitate towards the more physically challenge, challenging classes. And I think that's great. Anything that gets them in there and moving and using their bodies is going to be valuable. One of the things that I'm also seeing is a lot of the sports, uh, professional sports team, especially in the U.S., they have yoga as part of their, their training programs. Uh, and I've, I've also been working with some, uh, some professional soccer or football players as well who are also seeing the value of yoga to add longevity to their career. So, and that's, that's huge. And as soon as these uh, high profile men start sharing that they are doing yoga and even uh, as Kobe Bryant, the basketball player, he has a daily meditation practice, for example. As soon as that starts to get out in there, out into the, uh, into, into the psyche of men that, hey, it's okay to do this and, and it's actually gonna elevate you in some way, it's, and it's seen as a cool thing, we're gonna, it's gonna be way more balanced, it's gonna be a lot more men coming to the practice. And when, when men are in the class too, it, it elevates the, the energy of the class as well. You know, uh, there's a lot more fire in the class. So I like it, I enjoy it. Well, one of the things I'm focusing on a lot is just the conversation coming from teachers. Uh, even as, as, as I say, I like to get men into the class, we start with the body and we start, hey, get to know your body, challenge the body, and they feel physically, uh, physically uh, worked out. Uh, and part of the thing that I'm really focusing on is the level of spiritual conversation that comes from teachers to, in a very real way, in a real way that is meaningful. A lot of people that come to classes, they have uh, shit going on in their lives, you know, and they, they choose to come here as opposed to anywhere else. And that could be physically as well, like they choose to come here instead of going to doctors. But um, it's almost, I kind of see like the world, uh, we have physical doctors that, that address the, the physical body. We have doctors that address the psyche, but we need doctors that also address the spirit as well and speak to people at that level in a very real way and not esoteric and flowery kind of way, but in a, in a real way that speaks from our own experiences, but grounded in the practice, grounded in the physical expression of the practice so we don't lose that as well. Um, and what I've noticed is, yeah, people come to my workshops and they do handstands and stuff like that, but that's not the stuff that really touches them. That's not what they remember. They remember the little messages of truth that I share with them for my own, for my own living, from the things that I need to hear, I share with them. And I think the more that we do that, then we will come to the yoga class and say, wow, there's other people like me. There's other people who are struggling. There's other people who are trying to figure it out. Uh, and in fact, this teacher, well, he's, he's also trying to figure it out. And what he said, I totally resonate with, you know? Uh, and then I think that's when we start speaking soul to soul. And when we're communicating at that level, uh, then anything is possible. Yeah, anything is possible. Well, one of the things is you definitely see that it's uh, evolving and transforming. Um, and it pushes and pulls away from its roots all the time. And I think that's a good thing because what it does is it allows it to be localized. So whatever the trends are locally, people will always take yoga and they will uh, transform it in a way that speaks to the people to draw them in. Uh, in that, the, because it starts to get pulled away from what was tradition, there will be always a need or a desire to go back to the roots, to go, what, where does it come from? You know, and there's always that curiosity, and I had it as well. Uh, and there will always be that flux in that pool. And I don't know, like, you know, you see a lot of things like CrossFit coming out, and they, they tend to take some of the components, the great components of community, of yoga classes and stuff, and they're, and they're focusing on that. And I think that's a great thing. 
And I don't think that yoga necessarily has to hold the form that it has right now. I think it will change and many of the people that you saw in the room today will, part, will be part of that transformation. They will, be, they will be part of changing what yoga looks like in the future. Um, and I just hope that we don't lose this, the, I don't even want to say the spiritual aspect, but that part that we remember that this journey is about finding some place within ourselves, the truth or spirit. And for me, anything that connects you to spirit is yoga. And it doesn't have to be on the mat, and it doesn't have to be stretching and doing anything like that. It can be uh, cooking, it can be music, it can be art. Any, anything that connects you to spirit is yoga. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that it will change. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just hoping that I'm, I'm still here to rock out when it does. <laughs> so it's good.